I've been waiting for this album for I don't know how long. It's been a really long time. I've been listening to Gibby on for about two years now. And the first time I heard him was pretty much around when everyone else heard him, which was that Drake Chicago freestyle. I heard Gibby on's first album or his first EP, and I was hooked. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I was I was I was frontline center. I was like, this dude's the next one. His voice is crazy. Uh, there's no tricks, there's no gimmicks. He's just a strong vocalist, and I like him. I like him a lot. He's a bit more classy and less toxic than Brent, but more in a subtle way, you know what I'm saying? Most popular, the most standout, the ones with the most recognizable voice would definitely be Daniel Caesar, Brent Fayez, and Giveon. Who is the best amongst them all? They're all dropping singles. Daniel Caesar dropped a single not long ago. Giveon's about to drop this record, and Brent is also about to drop a record. I wanna know who out of the three sounds the best. Who out of the three is gonna have the best record? Cause that's who's gonna be able to get me the most bitches. And I don't wanna waste my own time either. I wanna just like hop right into this record, consume all the songs. Like, I wanna lie. I came to this video to lie. I want to learn how to lie while singing. Give you on, give or take, let me go. You're not supposed to start with a piano. Anytime you start with a piano as a grown man, About to kill me. This drop is about to occur and I'ma fall out. Say you wanna be just friends, but I can't oh. Niggas talking about Drake. Niggas talking about Drake. Like what what are you You know how they say everybody got a dark half? I think Giveon is the dark half. I'm a rational person. I don't like hurting people's feelings and I'm an empath. But for some reason I be lying. I am with the time I caught you. Let me know, let me, let me know, let me go. Mm, I think he's gaslighting. Pretty stripped back instrumental, um, singing wise, vocally. He's right here. I really need him to pick it up for me though and bring some like massive orgasmic hooks into the mist. Two is scarred. I can't give you my heart cause it's broken. I still come home with me. Oh babe, I'm broken. This track is perfect, okay? It's not only perfect because it's me, it's perfect because we've all had that experience, you know? Reap the benefits of the could be relationship. And since you don't want to be in one, due to whatever past that you've been through, you tell her that you're not ready. You know what I'm saying? Kind of blur those lines of friendship. And this is my girl. This is my woman. This is my this is my lover. I don't know what that is. I think it's like a chemical or something where it's like, I don't want anything. But at the same time, I just want the submission. What do they call that? Is it like a psychopath? Am I crazy? I love the chorus on this track instrumentally we're, we're really drawing it back and his voice and his vocals are really the standout right now which is perfect for me you know i will listen to this track again just as is no complaints i'm trying to hear where he can bring it all together though musically instrumentally you know and, and vocally just to bring forth like an anthem like an anthemic r&b cut from Giveon. track number three is december 11th pretty brown eyes i seen you from a mile that 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 the 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 pitch and the vocal the melody he hit just now ow fuck my knee pretty brown eyes y'all don't understand like when when it when it when it, that's the that's my spot girl i won't be here for long so baby if you hear this song can i use your company you trying to fuck a fan what the fuck what's wrong with you bro i would never do something like that what the fuck Someone caught his eye, he got horny. It happens. Problem is it's gonna breed right back into this cycle. You know what I'm saying? We already three, four tracks in, and he already trying to drag the new chick into the cycle. I would never do something like that. Great vocals, stripped back instrumental, just strings. I enjoy it. This will do. I'm looking back at you, beautiful up in your black dress. Far from loving, no. You let me go. It's just for the moment. That is actually a great song. Wow. Uh written wise, you know, he's talking about the 
pitfalls of being in the position that he's in but he wants to be in control of the relationship because he doesn't know who truly loves him because he's paranoid over you know whether or not the love or, or even the likeness is genuine I like the way that was written it's not get to you at track number five keep it low key blame it on the old me seven minutes sorry that i've been indecisive loving you on my time and some have fun you know me now my tank is on me the, the song progression of this reminds me of The Weeknd from SZA. I've been thinking about this for a second. I'm like, what does this sound like? It reminds me of that SZA record. <laughs> Lyrically, I think this kind of mirrors some of the subject matter of The Weeknd from SZA. There's a certain time when this person is afforded the luxury of your love or the luxury of your intimacy it says that it was the weekend for Gibeon. it's uh it's nighttime and i like how that track just kind of doesn't stop it's, it's almost like a late car drive it just it just keeps going even when the chorus starts and it ends and we get back into another verse it just keeps going uh track number six is trying to be i'm all in but i'm just a man with flaws all that i can be for you that was a cool track. Um, he wants control over everything right now, though. This dude is a fucking control freak. Um, I get it, bro, but like, 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 chill, my nigga. Like, this is kind of crazy. That was a cool track, though. I mean, it's all right. You know, uh, the, the, the instrumental being so stripped back here definitely puts, like I said, a stronger emphasis on his voice. But it being so bare bones kind of creates this almost Drake-ish Bryson Tiller damn near effect. Sounds like a really dated song. Uh, Unholy Matrimony at track number seven. Could have been together in a fast life. Oh, walking down the aisle to the old feet. Someone speak up. Oh my God. The drums are adding such a good weight to this track, but it isn't. It's like the drums are landing on a fucking cloud, like soft pillows. The drop is getting muddied, but it, it, it makes it so much more angelic because I don't know if there's this harp or these strings in the background. I know what happens when the love just ain't the same. Bro, what the fuck? Oh, what Nigga, you still what going? Did, it's crazy. All right, shut up, nigga. I don't know what you're talking about, okay? You don't know me. Stop. That was, that was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. I love that. And again, these tracks that he's making, they just, unless he stops to do these little advice cuts, even though I'm not taking advice from you, you fucking loser. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not like you. You don't know me. We're, we're different. I swear. I, I promise. I would never do this. Every track just has such great momentum. It builds really well, and then it keeps that that momentum going for the duration of the track without stopping until it's done. I don't know how he does it. July 16th. Already adored the way you it's June. And again, I'm not listening to myself. It, it may be too soon to say, but it's on my mind. This man is trying everything he can and every excuse in the book to not remain in a committed relationship. Do I understand it? Of course. Do I respect it? Obviously. Is it right? We gonna have to do a case study on it one day. Next track is for tonight. I've already heard this record, so I'm gonna skip it. It wasn't my favorite. I'm glad that the weaker cuts off this album are tracks that I've already heard. Uh, Lost Me at track number 10, and I've also heard Lie Again, which was pretty cool. It was decent, you know what I'm saying? That track is ass, bro. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. That was, that was horrible. I hated that track. And... It, 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 it was everything that it was everything that I could get sick of and tired of on a song and in general from Giveon. This sound like gentrified R&B to the max. I guess subject matter wise, the contents within this album aren't the most in depth. Anybody who's over the age of like 21 for the most part can tell what he's trying to do. But here it just manifests in the worst way possible. Track number 12 is another heartbreak. Not saying that will fail, girl. I just know that I'm scared. It will fail, but I'm still scared. It all could end. Uh, another heartbreak is cool. Once again, there's this anxiety, there's this fear. Um, because he thinks it won't work. You know what I'm saying? He's approaching. Uh, every song with that idea. Track number 13 is At Least We Tried. 
Running around it, I know that it crossed your mind Too paranoid till you let me in Can't let it go cause you got in the end I still wanna say Thematically, this album is extremely, extremely consistent. Uh, it's almost consistently trying to deny yourself the access to love by constantly giving yourself the excuse that it won't work out because you're afraid while also trying to convince someone else to let you into their world and their realm and then recycling this entire experience when they look at you as more than just a friend, even though you admit multiple times that you don't necessarily want a relationship. It is not always intentional, but if it's something that you can reflect on for a record, I would I would like to assume that you could change it over time. But that shit hard. Track number 14 is Remind Me. Did the old me cause it? Yeah, honestly cause it. Yeah, eventually you do this enough time, somebody gonna come and do it to you. Yeah, it all comes full circle, basically. Another track that I feel like, hook-wise, he could have just went crazy vocally. Like, he could have went into his high upper register to really bring forth, like I said, an orgasmic, anthemic hook. He's been pretty subtle in his approach so far, and I know he does have a, like a pretty naturally deep voice, but I really want to see him take it to those to those highs. Track number 15 and the final track off of this album is Make You Mine. And we get to the end of the album and this is when you want to commit. Why are we at the end of the road? Why'd you decide to do it now? Just keep being toxic. Is it obvious that I'm falling, I'm lost in it? And I need it up in your mind, your mind, for real. I, I need to focus on myself. Bro, shut up, all right? You got horny, all right, for an album. That's what that was. It wasn't love. <laughs> it wasn't love, bro. Your dick got hard. <laughs> she had good pussy. Outside of that intro, which was a little on the cornier side, uh, this, was a good, this was a cool listen. You know, thematically... I think it has a little bit to be desired. While I do like that he can acknowledge that he's doing these things, it, there's never an accompanied like why or past experience detailing what brought on the circumstances associated with this album. Um, it's all pretty much, I have trust issues. I'm uh, afraid that you won't love me for me and i'm afraid of my own karma because i do this to so many other people uh when is it going to be done to me on the end of the album we do end up getting a bit of closure where he comes to the understanding that he wants to be with this one particular person but in reality it's almost as if he's kind of saying that these are the motions that i go through whenever i meet someone and i think that this could be the one she may exhibit i guess qualities or attributes that might be similar to the things that I do onto other women, and she may do those things to me. And maybe he feels a closer connection to this particular chick because she exhibits signs of himself. But at the end of the day, he ends up basically coming back to the reality or the realization that I just fall hard and it doesn't take much for me to want someone, which isn't a very secure place for the girl that you end up being with to be in. So I'd imagine his turnover rate is, is pretty high when it comes to, to, to relationships. Uh, instrumentally, it's really laid back. It's really peeled back, which can work for some tracks. I do think maybe experimenting a bit more, possibly with some funk or some jazz, would, would just make this a record a bit more engaging from an instrumental or musical point of view. But vocally, I think he's really dominant. It's really hard to look at any of these records as background music or vibey songs when he is this present of a singer. So, all in all, I think it's a pretty dope record. You know, the, the second half definitely falls off, I feel like, not necessarily in quality, but just in terms of writing a little bit and overall creativity when it comes to his approach as a singer on these records because it does start to become a little bit samey after a time. But other than that, you know, it's a pretty solid Gibeon record. You know, I definitely enjoy the one where it's all gray or something like that. A bit more as I feel like it has stronger highs but with this being 15 tracks on an album 
I don't expect it to all be hits. If anything is going to be his banger, I definitely think it's going to be Unholy Matrimony. That shit is phenomenal. Uh, outside of that, y'all let me know how you felt about the album in the comment section down below. I'm very interested to hear how you felt about this record. I'm going to be playing it nonstop for a little bit, but I really catch my vibe. And until next time, you know what I'm saying? We out.